All right. We're going to open. This is uh, showing you the end of when you opened an image in Illustrator. I'm going to, I didn't get to finish the process for you with image trace. So I'm going to do it from the beginning with this video. So I'll just close this completely. <laughs> so I digitally inked it, right? And I saved it as a PNG. This is my PNG. PNGs are pixel based, even though this is high resolution, 350 pixels per inch, 11 by 14 inches. I'm going to take that PNG and I'm going to open it in Adobe Illustrator. So one easy way to do that is just take my PNG, drag it over to my dock, overlap Illustrator, and let it open up. Now once it's in Illustrator, I'm going to click on it and then go to Properties. So if you're on something else like Layers, click on Properties. Scroll to the bottom and go to Image Trace. Even though both Photoshop and Illustrator have AI, you know, a prompt-based generation now built into them, I don't want you to use that because I want you to understand how to make these things on your own first. And we're not compositing this project, we're drawing our own. So we're going to click on Image Trace. And of the options, the one I always use for this is black and white logo. Even though it's not a logo, that gives us the cleanest control, the best shapes. Then we want to click on the advanced options, which are right next to it. It's called the image trace panel. We can also get to this through window and image trace. Under that, you want to click on the drop down arrow for advanced options. And then the most important thing is that we click on ignore color. If we don't click on ignore color, we're going to get this. We're going to get a white and black vector. And we just want the black line art to be the vector. So when I click on ignore color, it's going to ignore all the white. So I just have black shapes. That's what I want. Next, I can play with these settings. But honestly, when you digitally ink like I did in Photoshop, the default settings are pretty spot on. And when you're happy with it, this is the step I didn't get to show before the video stopped. In order to get the actual vector anchors, this is just a preview. You can see that I can zoom in endlessly. But to turn it into anchor points and into a vector file you can save, you have to click on Expand, which is at the bottom right-hand corner. Once you hit on Expand, you'll see your anchor points and you've got one complete vector path, which if you need to modify, I recommend using the pencil tool and using it with smooth by double clicking and then just using it like magic scissors like we did for our logo by starting on the path, ending on the path. Like if I wanted to taper this down, I could. So that is how you can bring in raster files and trace them as vector line art. We're only doing that, whoops, we're only doing that with line art. I don't recommend using live trace on anything that's full color, right? Because vectors work on just clean, solid things. So line art, it can do pretty well. Now, let me show you the way I like to digitally ink. Instead of doing it in Photoshop, we can use similar tools and brushes within Illustrator and then not have to live trace at all. So I'm going to close this. And instead, I'm going to start a new file the exact same way. I'm going to open up my sketch, not my digital inking, but my sketch, this pencil sketch right here. I'm going to open that in Illustrator. It's a raster file. I took a picture of it with my phone, right? So now it's in Illustrator. Now I'm going to go to Layers, and I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to say Dim Images to 50%, Onion Skin it, and then I'm going to lock that layer, just like we did with our logo sketch. Now I'm going to put a new layer on top of it in Illustrator, and the new tool I'm going to use is not the paintbrush tool like it is in Photoshop. Instead, it's underneath the paintbrush tool. It's the blob brush tool. The reason for that is the paintbrush tool makes strokes, individual strokes, which are really hard to control. The blob brush tool makes individual fill paths 
that when they overlap, all become the same fill path. It's a wonderful tool for digital inking. Now, to set the settings, you'll notice there are no tool options at the top like there are in, in Photoshop. What you do is you double click it, just like the pencil tool, and you can set it to be more smooth than accurate. And I like this setting right here for digital inking on top of a sketch. And then most importantly, you can set your brush to be either a fixed dimension, which would be good for animation, right? Or you can set it to be pressure sensitive. Now, if you set it to be pressure sensitive, then you have to set the variation. So if I'm doing it 10 points, like a 10 point typeface, then I want the variation to also be 10 points. Last thing, I have to set the color. Right now it's a white fill with a black outline. I don't want that. I'm going to swap that and I'm going to make it a black fill with a white outline and then turn off the outline. So it's just a black fill. Now you can get used to your brush a little bit. You can just do a few strokes and you can see how it smooths them out as you go and it can go thick to thin and they're just gorgeous. And it's a lot, it doesn't slow down at all because no matter how weird your line is, it will smooth it at the end. So it doesn't have the delay that doing it with Photoshop and smoothness does. Okay, now I can zoom in. And just like I did in Photoshop, I can start inking. I can always hit Command-Z. And if I want to go thinner, I just double-click on the tool, and I just take that size down a little bit. Remember, these are vectors, so it's all scalable. And it's just like using an ink pen, but it will create the vector for me. Now, what I love about the blob brush is each time you make one, you see that's a vector, this is a vector, but as soon as you overlap an existing vector, they are all merged together. So it becomes one clean, very easy to understand vector asset for our line art. And why do we want it to be a vector lines? Well, if, that gives us the most versatility. If we use it for t-shirts, for stickers, this will always give us the absolute cleanest outline. Now, just like Photoshop, the hardest thing is not getting too perfectionist about it. Just working with what you've got. And the more practice you get digital inking, the more control you'll have. And again, if you want it to be more of a, um, a clean line, you can use smooth even higher, and you can also make it a fixed size. You know, so it's always the same width, no matter what. And that actually might be nice for this, to make it more like an animated line. So I'm going to do a fixed width, and I'm going to do, let's say, three point. I just need to finish out all the way. Now, professional artists tend to fall into two categories for line art. They either have a sketchy line or they have what's called an animator's line. And mine is definitely more of a sketchy line. So I have to like consciously kind of slow my breath a little bit and try to get in a different mode when I'm doing inking like this. Question, Josh? I put it on your desktop of your sketch. I'll come help.
So take some time to figure out what your settings are. You know, if you want how thick you want your line, how smooth you want it. Just check the settings like I have here. Actually, my settings are wrong there. There we go. These are the settings you want. A black fill, no stroke within Illustrator. And instead of erasing, because the eraser tool doesn't have that same smoothness option, so I'd say don't use the eraser at all, just stay on that blob brush. And when you want to repaint something, you just hit Command Z and redo it. If you feel like you don't have enough control in this, you can do it in Photoshop instead, but this actually gives you a lot fewer ways to mess up. So it just depends how your phone takes the image. If you open it in preview first and then export it as a JPEG, that's a format that can go into Canvas. Some phones are set up to take their photos in, in um, formats that aren't compressed, like HEIC format or TIFF format. So you need to open it up in preview, just double click it. It will open up in preview, which is the default image viewer on a Macintosh system. And then you say file export as a JPEG. So those of you who are animation fans, this will give you a lot of respect for the clean lines of animation. Because I'm zoomed in, I'm using my space bar to um, move around when I want to get somewhere else, but I'm just staying on this blob brush tool. Keep going. I just love, love how Illustrator will smooth it out for me. When I get a little shaky, it gets harder when you do the smaller shapes, right? So it also kind of helps you to keep in mind simplifying it as much as you can. So I always start with the mouth, or I'm sorry, the eyes, the head, the mouth, like all these little details, and then the, the rest isn't as much of a focal point. But I even want a tongue in here. And notice... This is what I like about Illustrator 2 and the blob brush. It makes it really, really obvious when I'm connecting the lines. So that it'll be easier to, to select these areas to color later. Now when things get a little messy where I have all the overlaps, that's when I can go to the pencil tool. <clears throat> 